Hello, come into to nine year another topic week video, and it's Halloween month, so let's talk about some scary things. The theme of the month is Resident Evil, and the first topic is going to be about something truly horrendous. The Resident Evil movies. Oof, the live action ones. Because those are terrible. This week's topic was submitted by Tumblr Non, and their topic is... We all know the live-action Resident Evil movies lack in severe quality, but arguably the biggest reason could be connected to one element. Alice. What is it about her that really makes her the root of every problem for each movie, and what could have been done to fix it if she had to be kept in the scripts? Okay. The, the, the live-action Resident Evil movies are absolutely atrocious. They have barely anything to do with the actual games, for the most part. The similarities, their connections are just superficial and slapped on. But like this person is talking about, one of the biggest problems can be connected to the main character of all the movies, Alice. Now, Alice is a character that's original to the movies and isn't from the games. That's not inherently a problem. Now, when you're doing these sorts of adaptations, like you're adapting things to movies, whether it's books, uh, video games, comic books, whatever, you're going to have to make changes to fit the, um, the medium. Because movies are very different. Like, especially when comparing it to video games, which is a very different. There's going to be, have to be a lot of care taken to actually properly translating it, translating the story in a way that works in the movie, and, and and keeping the things that people loved about the games, but being able to craft the story in a way that fits the format. Because video games have to have gameplay. So you have to you have your, your story, but the story is usually to um, assist in creating scenarios for the gameplay, like the whole story in uh, the first Resident Evil game taking place in the mansion. Well, that's because you need to set up the mansion as the big, essentially, the playground that you're going to be playing the game in. The movies don't have that, obviously. It's a passive medium. It's something that you just watch. You watch it for the length of the movie, and it's done. Video games can take a lot longer. So, it can be a little complicated in properly translating that, which is one of the reasons why you see so many video game movies fail so hard. It's because it's kind of hard to properly translate all of that into a movie. And that's even assuming that they care about what's in the story for the games in the first place. And the Resident Evil movies do not care about the story of the games. Now, as a, even as a fan of Resident Evil, the games aren't... They're not like Oscar-worthy stories, and that's part of their charm. They were initially meant to be a lot of the, uh, sort of the, uh, B-movie type of horror. They, they could be cheesy, and, but they, but they legitimately had some scary stuff, and especially in terms of atmosphere, and when you're stuck with minimal ammo in an area filled with enemies, the pressure's on, you're starting, you start to sweat. Now, uh, if I had to say that if you're adapting Resident Evil, there are a few things you have to get right. First off, you gotta include the characters that people love. Chris, Jill, Claire, Leon, Wesker, all these characters that are well-known in the games, you gotta have to include them. Which is something the first Resident Evil movie failed in, almost entirely, having almost nothing to do with the games. But... You have to keep the atmosphere. You have to have some kind of horror, like legitimate horror. It doesn't have to be, I'm not talking about like gory horror where they people get hacked to death, but you, you have to have, I mean, though there is some of that in the games, but it's like you have to have some suspense, some, you have to have some moments where the audience is like, oh, oh no, they're, they're behind you, Th those types of things. And something that Andrew and I noticed when we were watching Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is that the last part of that movie was more like a Resident Evil movie than the actual Resident Evil movies. I mean, they nail the tone and the atmosphere and when you really start piling on the details, it's like 
and you get your male protagonist, you get your female protagonist named Claire, and they're taking care of a little girl who's connected to mad scientists who are getting involved in all sorts of dangerous things. You have them in a big mansion that is owned by an old man who is involved with all the mad science stuff, and they're being chased down by a big monster that was created, and it ends up targeting the girl. I mean, shit, you make so many elements of Resident Evil 1 and 2 in that. And I don't even know if that was even remotely intended. If it was, then that's nice, but it's a Jurassic Park sequel. And it actually nails the atmosphere. You have all these nice tense scenes with the Indoraptor and them trying to beat it and them, you know, sneaking around trying to avoid it, trying to, you know, move around the whole area. And it was tense and you had some you had some great moments in that. And I'm like why is this movie a Jurassic Park sequel? It's a sequel to a, you know, another sequel to Jurassic Park. And why is this more like a Resident Evil movie than the actual Resident Evil movies? You're telling me that they couldn't be bothered to actually put in the effort that was put in for a Jurassic Park sequel. A sequel to Jurassic World. Come on. And you know, you can you can stress you can have a little bit of action, and that's fine because the game started moving more towards action, really, really with Code Veronica, and especially in Resident Evil 4, and it works, and it works. Uh, Code Veronica and Resident Evil 4 are pretty good, especially 4. I mean, there's a reason why 4 is so beloved. <laughs> now, when you're coming up with a story for a movie, oh, that's an adaptation of a video game. There are a lot of different ways you could do it. You could just transplant, like, a story, like, say, the story of Resident Evil 1 and make a movie about that. And I'm sure a lot of people would have been fine about with that. But, uh, I, I don't think it's inherently wrong to do something more unique. I mean, they could have done something like what the CGI movies do, and they have the, essentially, stories that take place between games. So you have characters like, like, De Degeneration. You had a story featuring Leon and Claire, so you have that that story with the airport and all the, the, the all the plot lines going on in that that just sort of kind of connect to the games. Like they made references to some older games and some stuff that went on in the sort of the modern games, but for the most part, it's pretty it's mostly self-contained. It's just mo some fan service for you know, especially if you're a fan of Lair and what am I saying, Claire and Leon. Or the movies could have done what they ended up doing, but done better. Where they basically say, okay, we're going to be doing our own thing, but inspired by Resident Evil. That's fine. And I know a lot of fans are going to be like, oh, well, we want the Arkley, we want the, the mansion, we want Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. And you know what? That's understandable, and I'd like to see that. But I don't think it's wrong to do something more unique, and I don't even mind if they introduce new characters. Because the whole, the series has overall introduced a bunch of new characters. I mean, at one point in time, Lean on Claire were new characters. I mean, and the stories, have, some of the games have introduced likable new characters. Like, okay, Resident Evil 6 is a dumpster fire. Resident Evil 6 is awful. The story is trash. The portrayals of the characters is weirdly inconsistent. Like, sometimes it's actually pretty good, but then it's just, sometimes it's atrocious. Why is Leon hesitating to shoot a zombie, even if it's the president? He's been through this a few times before. He's not gonna go, No! No! What are you doing? No, Mr. President! But then you also have scenes where Sherry is talking about uh, Leon and Claire in, um, in things from Resident Evil 2 and, re like, reminiscing about that. I'm like, oh wow, it's actually pretty good. You know, and you have these weird moments, but that's besides the point. When you're introducing new characters, what the game did is actually it did have some likable new characters. And I'm as surprised as anyone, really, is that I actually ended up liking some of the new characters in Resident Evil 6. I think a lot of people pretty much agree that Piers is the best new character, so of course they kill him off. Well, you know, he was he was likable. He was a he was a good character, and he played well off of other characters. Uh, even Helena Harper, I kind of liked Helena too. 
I mean, the way she was handled was, yeah, questionable, and considering the story was bad and Simmons was a terrible villain, all things considered, she was pretty good. I liked, I, I think I liked more of the idea of her character, a government agent who was blackmailed and forced into working with, you know, assisting in a bioterrorism attack and instigating events in the game because of her sister. I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I can, I can really... I, I actually, when I was uh, first going through it, I mean, I was like, yeah, okay, this is not that great, but, you know, I, I do kind of like Helena's character. And, I mean, it wasn't handled all that well, and especially when it came to her sister. Her sister was, like, transformed into, like, a monster form, and she's just trying, still trying to save her, and it's just like, let it go. Just stop. And... I mean, obviously, everything wasn't handled all that well, but I liked the idea of Helena, and had the game had a better story, I would have really, really liked Helena. And shoot, even Jake. Again, this is the how it was handled wasn't that great, because Jake would have worked far better as a clone of Albert Wesker than his son, because I just don't see Wesker being a one-night stand. If he, if he wasn't going to hook up with Excella in Resident Evil 5, and she was just throwing herself at him, then, yeah, no, I don't see him doing that. Because he never really... He seemed like the person who was always craving more power and control rather than trying to sleep around. But it's one of those things of... An idea that would have done better in a better story. The way he played off of uh, Sherry was great, and I, I think there were actually some missed opportunities to really develop a... Um, sort of a friendship between... Uh, Sherry and Jake, that sort of was um, a more positive mirror, a heroic mirror of the friendship between um, Wesker and Birkin and William Birkin back in the day. It's like their dads used to be friends. This was like Albert Wesker's only friend. <laughs> and I mean, there was there were opportunities missed, but I mean, there was, there was great potential in this. And my point with talking about this is that you can introduce new characters. Alice isn't inherently bad because she's a new character. She's not inherently bad because there's any kind of focus on her. That's not the problem. But the, uh, the problem is when she's basically the sole focus. And this is a problem that goes throughout the series. She is the main character. And ends up being a little suspect when the actress who plays her is married to the director. But I'm not going to really touch on that. But it's frustrating. Even when they did start bringing in characters like Chris and Jill and stuff, everyone plays second fiddle to Alice. Because Alice is the main focus. The story's focus on Alice. Everything revolves around Alice. And it's annoying. This isn't just um, throwing... Like, this is just throwing in uh, stuff from the games. But it's not just doing that. It's doing it, but in such a lazy way. It's like, no, we want to focus on Alice. And it's like, no. Like, she can still be an important character, but be mindful that you're adapting an existing franchise with characters that are already really popular. I mean, it's just isn't even that hard. Like, I'm not going to go through a whole bunch of rewrites, but I can propose some ideas of how to handle some of this stuff. Like, it's like when you connected everything to Alice... When the plot revolves around her, when the plot focuses on her to the um, to the detriment of every other character, and on top of with bad writing, just almost allergic to the game, but still wanting to sort of there's still copy and pasting stuff from the games. Like, why in the hell was an executioner Magini in the game in the movies? Oh well, he's in the games. It's like they they copied that one scene in Resident Evil Five. Where uh, Wesker is f fights um, Chris and you know Sheva, and he does that thing with the sunglasses, and he throws him, copying the movie uh, Drive with Mark Dacascus, where he throws it, and Chris catches the glasses, and then Wesker just starts beating the crap out of him, and he, then he grabs the glass from him, and he he puts him back on, all dramatic, and he just starts kicking their butts. They basically copied that scene from the games, which I wouldn't even mind. If it wasn't like just, these things were just slapped in because, well, they want stuff from the game, so let's just 
slap it in there. Like, it's it's frustrating. Like the first movie, the first movie had not, almost nothing to do with the games. It, they had like a few things. I mean, frankly, it's been a while since I've seen the first movie, and I don't remember much of it because all these movies are so forgettable. Like, I've tried watching some of these movies, and, like, even afterwards, like, I, I don't think I've finished one entirely, but sometimes it's hard to remember because I get so freaking bored with these movies, but... But I will at least give them credit for trying to do something different in the first movie. But as the movies go on, it's like they're just slapping in stuff from the games. And it I'm almost more insulted that way than if they just did their own thing. Because if they just did their own thing, then fine, whatever. But when you include Chris and Jill and Claire and Leon and Ada and Wesker, but you just don't really know what to do with them, like that that's like, okay, at that point you're just pissing me off. It's like, look, they're in their video game outfits. Okay, like, is that supposed to fix the plot? <laughs> is, that, is that supposed to fix all the terrible writing? Is that supposed to fix that, you know, at times Alice ends up being sort of a Mary Sue? Just... <sighs> if I was writing a movie, if I was ch if I was told to write a Resident Evil movie, you know, I would take inspiration from the, from the games. I mean, shoot, you could... You could have something uh, based on the first game. You could even you could start in the second game and do something with Leon. You could just sort of do something a uh, mix and sort of have uh, just a, its own story, but very much based on the games. Because if it if it took a lot of elements from the games and then just sort of made its own story, that would have been fine. Now, <clears throat> if I was in the situation, I was writing it, and they put a gun to my head, and they said, "You have to put Alice in the movie." There are a couple ways you can do that. In you know, Flood City, you have uh, Chris and Jill on Stars, and you have the Stars unit. You could have Alice be a member of Stars, or just a member of Group. Um, uh, or she maybe she works for Umbrella. Maybe she's sort of like uh, like Hunk. You could do all sorts of things in this that has her, that has her you know in the story, but not leeching off of all the other characters and leeching screen time. And focus. You could actually have, um, and that's probably one that I would probably end up going with, is you have uh, her as a civilian that gets rescued in, say, the first movie. Maybe it's one that's in set in Raccoon City while the you know the whole issue things go down and things go crazy, and she's a, um, a civilian who gets rescued. And then as the movies go on, she starts uh, becoming more competent and much more. Um, more used to it, in, in a lot of ways like how uh, Leon and Claire, who they started out not having as much training as Chris and Jill, and but ended up becoming really awesome, like you see especially with Leon going from two to four, how he became significantly more awesome, because you, know, he, he gets used, you get used to the craziness, and he ended up becoming an awesome government agent. Uh, you could have done something like that with Alice and have her start off as a civilian but ultimately become better and but have that be sort of on the side where you're focusing on the main plot and it's like yeah you have Wesker being the villain but actually you know it's just it doesn't it feels half-hearted is what it feels like it doesn't feel like this really genuinely cares about the games it's like you could have Alex Wesker in pretty much any plot Especially if he's not even involved, he could be like what he does in Resident Evil 4, where he's working behind the scenes and pulling strings, having his agents in, uh, infiltrate and get involved, and he's got all of his hands in the cookie jars, and I'll talk a little bit more about Alex West, Alex Wesker, Albert Wesker later in, in the month, but you can do a lot with this, and... In all honesty, the sky's the limit. You don't need to follow the stories of the games. But even if you did, even if you just said, here's the Resident Evil movie, it's based off of Resident Evil 1, here's Resident Evil 2, based off of Resident Evil 2, 3 is based on 3, 4 is based on Code Veronica, 5 is based on 4. It's a little confusing, but Code Veronica is a little important. 
But then let's just say you have that. You have easy material that'll last you for at least five movies. You don't even need to do much more than that. And shoot with a little creativity, you can easily stretch this. You really don't have to follow Resident Evil 5 or 6. To be, to be perfectly honest, they're not that great. Um, but you know, there's things you can do, and if you had to include Alice, include her as a side character, a new character who develops and grows and is likable and, you know, someone you can, you know, get attached to. Because the reason why Alice is so hated by a lot of people and so unbearable, I mean, aside from the fact that she's just not a very likable character, she's not really interesting, and the fact that she does leech off of the, the focus of the movies from other characters that we do care about, kind of a problem and it makes it a little difficult when you see someone like Jill 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 oh no way here's Alice she's the main focus you're not doing much good in getting ill and getting w goodwill with your fans because you're just generating ill will and it's it's stuff like that that's just really frustrating it's like and I don't honestly don't understand what the issue is with some of these writers and what Paul W. S. Anderson's issues are. You can easily make good movies. You can make some solid movies based on Resident Evil. Creating your own stories, like pulling inspiration from the games, following the games beat for beat, pretty much. You know, you could do a lot. And then they just did a weird mix of the two. But the stuff they take from the games is just so half-hearted and lazily slapped in. It's almost more insulting than if they just ignored the games completely. Because it's in because it's like, look, guys, we're appealing to you, the fans. But then we're going to ignore the stuff from the games to focus on Alice. Give me a break. Give me a break. I, I've seen a couple of these Resident Evil movies. I think I've seen three of them. It's so hard because I end up forgetting a lot about these movies. That's just unforgivable. They're 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 so forgettable. It's just like, and I'm honestly pissed off that they keep making so many of them, because they really do not deserve it. But yeah, you know, in all in all honesty, a lot of problems connect to Alice. But even then. Alice in and of herself is more of a symptom of the bad writing because if they put in some decent effort into writing a story into writing something that could be totally new but still respectful if you had a story in lieu in the line of like degeneration where it doesn't follow the games but it's its own thing that's fine just respect the series that you're adapting and that's and it feels like there's no love at all for Resident Evil. And, you know, and it's just obnoxious. Movies are terrible, and Alice is a terrible protagonist. The fact that she ends up sucking up all that screen time and just take she she's a leech. She's a she's a cancer in this in this series, and I've no I've nothing against the actress because as far as I know, she was just playing a part that she's been playing for years. It's really up to the director and the writer. I think, it, did Paul W. Sanderson write these? But whoever wrote them, it's, it's obvious that this is just cashing in and trying to make money off of the Resident Evil name. And I can't stand adaptations like that. Well, I think that's about it for this topic. Sums up, the Resident Evil movies suck and Alice is not a good character. <sighs> but she could have. I mean, shoot, you could have actually made her likable and maybe people would have wanted to see her in the games in some way, shape, or form. To be sort of a... Uh, to move from canon, like you would see characters like Harley Quinn moving into the DC Comics. But no. No. Tis a shame. I'd really like to see a good Resident Evil live-action movie. But, at least we have CGI movies. 
So, yeah. If you want to submit a topic to me, you can comment below if you're on YouTube or if you're on Tumblr. Send me an ask and put topic colon, then whatever topic you want me to talk about. Just make sure to follow the rules that I'll be posting down below. If you want to watch last week's topic video, you can check that out here. If you want to watch next week's topic video, you can check that out here when I get that done. So if there's any thoughts you have about the Resident Evil movies, that, do you hate them? Do you hate Alice? Please comment below. And thank you for watching.